If you've ever faced this low heartbreak and loss of dignity that takes place when you're trying to get a guy to commit to you, to the point where it starts feeling like you want it more than he does, well, today I'm gonna show you a better way, one that leads to him on his own, willingly, excitedly, and openly committing to you. While it's true that some men fear commitment more than women, there's a process and an experience where men willingly commit and there's no type of manipulation that needs to take place. I love to share with you a quote by a mystic by the name of Sai Baba from India that exemplifies the essence of what I want to share with you right now. And it goes something like this. Duty without love is deplorable. Duty with love is desirable. Love without duty is divine. And the way I want to frame it for the specific situation that we're in right now is when you can get a guy to commit to you through force manipulation, through trickery, through guilting him, then it's going to be a specific type of commitment when you can instead invite and inspire a man to willingly understand that this is the best thing that can happen to him and to take the steps to devotionally commit to you for life then you're creating a completely different level of relationship, one that because of how it started is more likely to continue down the same path. Hello, my name is Bern, and if you'd like to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. So what I wanna do right now is share seven things I need you to know in practice that can exponentially change the game for you from being someone who is at the mercy of someone one day wanting to commit to you to every step of the way, a guy willingly taking the steps that make you feel safe and make him feel excited to be able to provide that level of awesomeness in the relationship. Step number one is understand that on the commitment front, it's not one commitment, it's a series and a journey of micro commitments and without those micro commitments sequentially taking place, the likelihood that the big commitment at the end will take place is really, really unlikely. But if every step of the journey, with every devotional action, the man is getting closer to that commitment, then the next final commitment is going to be the natural byproduct of everything that's been taking place so far. Let me give you an example of what I mean. The first micro commitment is a commitment to a vision. Imagine that you connect with someone and you have no idea what he's looking for in a relationship, and you do, and you start exploring the relationship with hopes that one day he could end up being the one, the guy who pops the question and asks you to be his wife. Well, without having that vision, that commitment, you're kind of wasting your time. But what happens if to date you, he needs to commit to a vision that either matches yours or doesn't, and if it matches yours, and the, the vision is one day I want to be a husband to a woman. That's one sequential step that's getting you closer to the end result. The next micro commitment is going to be the commitment to pursue. In this dynamic and this exchange that's not black and white and it's not just one or the other, but there's more of one than the other called feminine and masculine. There's a pursuer and someone who's pursued. And if you want my highest advice and my highest hope for you is that you fall under the being pursued versus pursuing someone first, because it's far more likely that you'll enjoy that. B, and we're gonna talk more about that in step number two, because a man is gonna be more likely to continue investing and committing if he's taking action and ownership in the dynamic of the relationship. The third micro commitment is gonna be the commitment to hold off on having sex with you delay gratification, invest emotionally first so that when you reach a certain point of exclusivity, you might decide to have sex at that point, but not before getting to know each other, not before in him investing, having more skin in the game. And I'm not talking about physical skin, I'm talking about heart, I'm talking about effort, I'm talking about pursuit, I'm talking about action, not just words. The next micro commitment is gonna be the one of conscious exclusivity. Uh, and here's what I mean by conscious. There's many human beings who date and because they're not dating somebody else, they just become de facto exclusive to each other without really understanding what they're going for and without having a label to 
kind of give a meaning to what they're doing. When you're in a conscious exclusive relationship with a man, that means that you've discussed what the end goal is, you've discussed who you are to each other, you've discussed the next steps that need to happen so you can continue getting to know him and ultimately get to that destination that you're both going for. There's multiple steps along the way, but my main goal right now is for you to understand that it's not just one commitment, it's multiple commitments, and you need to be able to gently guide him, invite him to take those steps or not, but not waste your time with someone who's not willing to go sequentially along the way. The second principle I need you to really understand is that his level of effort is going to be proportional to the level of commitment he's willing to make. So here's what I mean. If you connect with a man and by virtue of connecting with them and having chemistry, you become exclusive and you start having sex with them, his level of effort is so low relative to what he's gaining that the likelihood that he will stop investing and wanting to commit is high. Why? Because he didn't work for it. Now, I'm not talking right now about playing hard to catch and about playing games where you're making it harder than it needs to be just to see him sweat. I'm talking about not forcing things, but having a high standard where the natural thing that needs to take place because you have high standards is that he needs to step up, he needs to show up, he needs to invest, he needs to connect, he needs to learn, he needs to meet you at the level where you're at right now in your heart so that he feels that wanting and that willingness to intrinsically from the inside out want to commit. Him putting in the effort lets him understand that you have a lot of value, that not any guy who shows up with a nice smile and with some charisma can earn your heart. Third principle is don't fight his life stage. There's too many women who are interested in having a guy who is at a life stage where commitment is a luxury and want him to commit. If the guy is unsure about what he wants to do in life, if he's going through a midlife crisis, if he's financially in shambles, the likelihood that he has what it takes to commit to you, commit to you for life, have a family with you, is just on the ridiculous scale. So although men who have challenges want to step into commitment, you need to make sure that you understand where he's at in his life relative to the expectations you have. And the more the life stage that he's at differs from what a guy who's able to commit can step into, the more you're playing Russian roulette along the game. So when you decide to consciously connect with men, make sure that not only do you feel the chemistry and you feel like there's a vision that's aligned, but also that the life stage he's at is one that allows him the luxury at that stage because it's at a higher level need to commit, to invest, and to develop an amazing relationship. Before I share my next few steps, I have an invitation. If you're a single woman watching this, I have a high suspicion that you don't fully grasp the true reason why you're still single. I'm not talking about the symptoms, I'm talking about the root cause. So what I've done is I've taken 12 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every love challenge you can imagine, and understanding what are the reasons and the blind spots that make them not connect to the man they want. And if you want to find out your answer to the question, why am I still single, you need to go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this, Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have not only the answer to the question, what's the number one reason you're still single, but you'll also have a report that based on your specific blind spot will share what's the highest return on investment action you can take starting today to close that gap and get into the relationship that you want. The fourth principle is you need to go deeper on getting to know each other. And here's what I mean. When human beings start dating and they feel excitement about each other, the natural path that I've observed lately is that there's a merging of lives that sometimes leaves the really getting to know someone, going deep into someone's vision, passion, someone's model of the world, someone's love map, and start doing life, going through the motions and asking the very basic questions, how's your day and what are you doing this weekend, and things of that nature that really don't lend themselves to get you to really get to know his heart. Getting to know each other is the one thing that can help him to go from fear of losing freedom to redefining freedom as being seen, being met, being understood, being listened to. So take the time as you're going through the motions of connecting with someone to ask the kinds of questions 
that will allow you to get the core of who he is in his heart, even if there's scary questions sometimes, have those conversations. There's nothing wrong with having fun when having fun is at the expense of going deep, then you're really navigating blind and you're, again, playing Russian roulette because you really have no idea what the guy is. Now, another powerful byproduct of going deeper is that the shared vulnerability that you're experiencing makes him want to commit more, right? Because when he's seen and felt by someone, when he's sharing things that he hasn't shared with anyone, when he's experiencing that from you, when it's a mutual back and forth, the willingness to commit is a natural byproduct of that added vulnerability in the context of, of building a relationship. Step number five is don't ever stop filling your cup. Something that happens when you've been wanting to be in a relationship and sparks fly and things start going well is that the very thing that created the energy he fell in love with and fell attracted to is the very thing you stop doing. And you start replacing the things you were doing that made you feel fully alive with things about the relationship. Now, there's obviously going to be a back and forth in a relationship where you're spending time together and there's probably less time to do other things. When you completely stop filling up your cup, then the energy that created the relationship lessons and then you're trying to work really hard to get him to do things that he would willingly be more able to do if you were radiating if you were shining the same way when he first connected with you so make sure that the habits the principles the connections the friendships that make you feel insanely alive are something that you still commit to regardless of having the relationship be part of your life sixth point stop enabling confused men and here's what i mean uh, going through this path, this multiple series of commitment, there might be a point in the connection where the guy loses sight of the vision, where he's no longer sure about what he wants, where he's confused about what he ultimately wants with someone and also with you. If you try to spin the plates and to dance the little dance and to convince him that you're the right woman for him, you're enabling his behavior because basically he's getting all the privileges of someone who is taking the right steps for a specific destination for someone who is not really sure that this is what he really wants. So the best thing you can do when he's confused is get a break, give him some space, let him in his solitude, in the confines of his own being, let the void hit him in such a way that he can make an informed decision whether he wants to go all in on you again or not. But don't try to force it. When you try to force it, he loosens the intensity. When you give him the space, you might be surprised at how quickly the sharp aloneness of his own being lets him know that he's making a mistake and he wants to con connect with you. And again, it's not about setting an ultimatum, it's about valuing yourself enough to know that you're willing to explore so long as there's a clarity in terms of what's happening. Last thing I'll share with you, there's always a point in a guy connecting with a woman who despite the excitement to commit, and also the fears around commitment, he reaches a stage where he feels, I cannot afford to lose her. When you've done the steps of sequentially connecting with them, when you've shown your value, when you're filling up your own cup, when you're getting to know him deeply, when you're sharing vulnerability, when there's conversations around the next steps, you're not afraid of having conversations about, in best of cases, where do you see yourself uh, in this relationship? What do you see going forward? What makes you feel excited? Uh, when you have those conversations, then there's gonna be a point in which the Fears around commitment are going to be lower than the fear of losing you. And that's the point we need to reach. If you found this helpful and useful, it would mean the world to me if you like and subscribe to my videos. If you want to understand what are some beliefs that are hidden in your subconscious mind that are making you finding the right human being to be, spend the rest of your life with more challenging, then go to this video right here and it will give you your answer.